I spend a lot of my time in my sewing room which I absolutely love being in there but I would like to take my sewing to different parts of the house for example in the living room so I can spend time with my family whilst I'm stitching. I like having a table in front of me which is why I tend to just stay in the sewing room and I've just bought this lovely seat for the garden and if it ever stops raining then I'd love to make that my EPP spot. The rest of the garden is a work in progress at the moment but when it's all done I think that's going to be the perfect stitching place. So I bought this tray table and I think this is going to be perfect for being a bit of a portable sewing station but I need to make something to go inside it because as well as needing a table to lean on for my wrists to lean on which helps me sew better and is more comfortable for me another reason why I don't take my sewing to different parts of the house is because I have a young child and a cat and I'm always scared that they're going to hurt themselves on needles and scissors so I want to make something for this tray table that will keep everything really secure inside as you can see it has legs so that's perfect if I want to have it a bit higher and a bit more raised to help my posture when I'm sewing or I can stow them away underneath if I want it flat. So today's video is all about what I'm going to make to put inside this tray to make it into a really functional portable sewing station and you can do this to any tray if you want to make one too. First thing to do is to measure the inside part of the tray. This is where the pocket is going to sit. Mine was 16 inches and 7 eighths across and 11 inches in height. To attach everything into the tray, I'm using Velcro, stick-on Velcro that is especially for fabric. If you use the other type of stick-on Velcro, it won't work on fabric. First I'm putting a cutting mat in place, now I'm not putting it there to actually use it for rotary cutting, I definitely do not recommend that as doing that on your knee would be dangerous as it's not a stable surface. But I thought it would be nice to have a cutting mat there for glue basting, it gives me a nice hard surface that I can wipe any glue off afterwards. So I'm just using the velcro to attach it in place. Next, to make the pockets, I'm using foam to add some stability and it's about a quarter of an inch thick and I'm going to cut my foam to be about a quarter of an inch smaller than the interior of my tray. To make the pockets, I'm using this really special fabric called Pemberley, so it's Jane Austen themed and I was very lucky to have been given this as a gift from a friend and I've been saving it for a special project. So this is what I'm going to use today. I have starched it and pressed it and now I'm using spray base to make a quilt sandwich. For This is for the back of the pocket. So I've put this beautiful print on one side and this lovely floral print on the other side. And now I'm just going to quilt it on the machine uh, with stitches that are about an inch apart. So now that the back of the pocket is done, this is the front of the pocket and I've decided that the best way to use such a beautiful fabric would be to create this EPP front panel and to use really big hexagons for the lovely house motifs and they're actually two inch hexagons and then the petals around the edge are one inch half hexagons and then I've just filled it out with hexagons and half hexagons to make it into a rectangle. So I've got one strip at the top and then the other strip at the bottom and the zip is going to go in between. So this is how I basted the half hexagon. If you're interested in how I basted the actual hexagons then I do have other videos that show that. So the hexagon cushion video or there is a video just about glue basting hexagons and I'll leave a link to those at the end. Now you do get these little flaps at the corners of a half hexagon but I just glue them back out of the way making sure I've still got my points. 
So now all the pieces are basted and laid out, it is time to get stitching. So once I had made the three big rosettes, I decided to join them together with each other before filling out the edges with the other smaller hexagons. This is what it looked like when I joined the three motifs together and then put the other hexagons all the way around the edge. All that was left now was to fill in those gaps to square it off using half hexagons. And then to do the panel at the top that will go above the zip. And so I set to work piecing the rest of it together whilst watching Pride and Prejudice of course and then I moved on to some simple hand quilting around the large hexagons and this lovely relaxing process really allowed my mind to wander and relax and to think about Jane Austen stories which really capture my imagination. So when I came back from Pemberley I had hand quilted everything, I'd gone round all of the hexagons and half hexagons and it really made the hexiform loosen up and become really soft and squishy. I didn't put any wadding on the back or anything like that, this is just hexiform with the fabric over the top and then hand quilted. I'm now going to put some backing fabric on it, attach the zip and then I will eventually trim those points off that are down either side so it fits into the tray. I'm attaching the zip by putting some bias binding on first and that's just going to give the edge of the EPP a really nice straight look to it.
So after installing the zip, I trim those points off around the edge just to square it all up. And those little gaps won't matter because I'm going to bind the whole thing with bias binding and that will cover those little gaps up. So now I'm layering up my quilt sandwich that I made before, which is the back of the pocket, the zip front of the pocket, and then I will get this lovely bias binding and run it all around the edge to join it all together. Really simple. And to finish the bias binding, I am just stitching it down on the back by hand and that just gives it a really nice finish. And here it is finished and I'm really pleased with it. It looks great. It's so pretty. It has that lovely Jane Austen feel to it and I think I'm going to get so much use out of this with the cutting mat underneath and then a pocket to store everything. I'm really looking forward to using it and taking my sewing to more places around the house and garden. I'm someone who has to have a lamp when I am sewing, which is another reason why I always stay in the sewing room. But I found this daylight lamp and it was quite inexpensive actually. And it clips perfectly onto the handle of my tray and casts a lovely daylight right over the work surface so again another reason why I'm definitely going to be able to take my sewing about this lamp doesn't plug in it actually charges up so there's no cables while you're using it so really really handy Thank you so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you soon, bye bye.